welcome back. Thanks for coming back from the coffee break. So we uh, will continue on with the next part of the program here, which is uh, mainly focused on uh, liquid chromatography. And we have in the next presentation a story about uh, dealing with what we refer to as the mobile phase incompatibility problem in, in 2D LC. So as someone who mainly does 2D liquid chromatography, I can tell you we're quite jealous of the, the situation in GC where you have so much control over retention with temperature. We don't have that luxury, so uh, we have to deal with it other ways. And uh, so uh, Marie Foran is going to uh, share this story with us. Thank you for the introduction. And uh, thank you for the organization for uh, inviting me to this presentation. Um, so it's about a systematic study of um, a two-dimensional interface with active solvent modulation or ASM to overcome the mobile phase incompatibility between hydrophilic interaction liquid chromatography and reverse phase liquid chromatography. Um, so as mentioned before today, like when you analyze very complex samples in one dimensional liquid chromatography, you often still have overlapping peaks and very messy chromatograms. And in two dimensional liquid chromatography, you can get much higher resolving powers and peak capacities. And that is why 2DLC is becoming more and more popular to analyze a lot of complex samples, including in environmental analysis, food analysis, or uh, biopharmaceuticals. And uh, to gain as much of the resolving power as possible for these 2DLC methods, it's important to select um, LC modes that are sufficiently complementary. For example, when you analyze samples that contain compounds with a wide polarity range, an interesting combination is um, reverse phase liquid chromatography and hydrophilic interaction liquid chromatography. Um, in reverse phase liquid chromatography, the stationary phase is uh, more uh, hydrophobic and uh, the mobile phase contains, uh, when you increase the percentage of organic in mobile phase, the compounds start to elute. And in hydrophilic interaction liquid chromatography, uh, the stationary phase contains a water layer in which your polar complex are more retained and they can be eluted by increasing the percentage of water in the mobile phase. But so as you can see, uh, these two modes have a complementary selectivity. It's working. I can do like this. Okay, sorry, <laughs> Okay. And um, so as you can see, uh, both these phases have an opposite elution strength. And uh, that is why if we combine them into two DLC methods, uh, we have this problem of uh, mobile phase incompatibility. So what happens is uh, a fraction from the first dimension, uh, which is often like larger volumes and also a high percentage of organic. And when these fractions are sent to the second dimension, uh, the analytes are less retained on your second dimension column, and uh, this causes a lot of problems, including band broadening, peak distortion, or even breakthrough. And this results overall in a reduced peak capacity and peak intensities. Now, there are uh, possible solutions to this problem, and they mainly insist either modifying the composition and or volume of these fractions coming from the first dimension. Uh, now, there are a few strategies to, uh, to try to do this. For example, uh, flow splitting, online dilution, with or without trapping columns, or even solvent evaporation. Uh, but another method recently developed is called this active solvent modulation. And what happens here is that you actually dilute your fractions from the first dimension via a bypass to the ASM capillary with your second dimension mobile phase. And this dilution actually causes your analytes to be more focused on your second dimension column. And uh, this results in much improved peak shapes in the second dimension. So how does this principle actually work? Uh, if your sample that's being uh, analyzed in the first dimension, and then it reaches the interface where it is stored in these uh, sampling loops. And then um, the ASM valve, it actually switches 
And at first, you have the ASM phase or the dilution phase. And during this phase, uh, your sample stored in the sample loops uh, actually gets diluted because your mobile phase can flow uh, via this bypass. And then your sample is sent to the reverse phase column in the second dimension. And then after this dilution step, uh, your actual gradient in the second dimension starts. So then your uh, percentage of acetonitrile increases and then your analyte gets uh, analyzed in the second dimension. Um, so this is a very interesting approach to deal with this uh, mobile phase incompatibility problem. However, there are not really clear guidelines regarding the optimization of this process. And that's why we wanted to investigate in this study a few of the possible optimization parameters. Uh, so I first quickly discussed the experimental uh, conditions, then the parameters that we optimized, and then I will add to a short conclusion. Um, so to study the different parameters, we used a simplified 2DLC setup, which uh, consists in the first dimension of a restriction capillary instead of a hilly column, just to speed up the analysis uh, time. And then we had for the mobile things, um, typical hilly conditions with 95% acetonitrile. And then in the second dimension, we had a reverse phase C18 column and a generic gradient from 5 to 95% acetonitrile. Uh, and all the experiments were carried out on the Agilent uh, 1290 Infinity 2DLC system, uh, which was interfaced with then the BSM one that I mentioned, and then two decks um, with the sampling loops for the storage of the one-dimensional fractions. And uh, we uh, used a simplified sample of only six compounds, um, and we chose the compounds based on their variable pollution across the two-dimensional separation space because we really wanted to see the difference between the more early eluting and later eluting compounds. Um, so first, to highlight again the incompatibility problem, we uh, did our experiments without a PSM. And as you can clearly see, uh, all the peaks show a bit of broadening and especially the early eluting peaks even show splitting or uh, breakthrough. So this is because of the high percentage of acetonitrile in the fractions going to the second dimension. And then when we use the ASM with the dilution factor of 5, we can see that uh, especially for the later eluting peaks, the peak shapes are much better. Um, yeah, and this is because of this dilution that happens. And so we use a dilution factor of 5, which is the currently commercially uh, the highest available dilution factor. But as you can see, the earlier eluting compounds, they still uh, show some peak shape issues. And this is because they are more uh, sensitive to the high percentage of uh, acetonitrile. And so then these are the four parameters that we tried to optimize in this study. Uh, I will discuss them later in more detail, but they were the filling percentage of the sample loop, the unloading configuration of the sample loops, the dilution factor, and the duration of the ASM phase. So first, I will start with the dilution factor. Now, what is this dilution factor? It's actually the, the split ratio between the sample stored in your sample loops and the bypass in the ASM capillary. And so it actually depends on the back pressures generated in a, yeah, the flow through this ASM capillary and the flow path through the deck and the sampling loops. And so you can change the, the dilution factor actually by changing the dimensions of this capillary. For example, uh, when you have a longer capillary, you have a higher back pressure, and that's why you have uh, less flow going to the capillary and therefore a lower dilution factor. And so in this study, we also tried some higher dilution factors compared to the commercially available ones. And so here you see the results of the different dilution factors. Uh, so as you can see, the lower dilution factors, um, they still had some issues with the early eluting peaks. And this is probably because the dilution is not sufficient enough to overcome the incompatibility problem. And when you see that you increase the dilution factor too much above a factor of 10, the early eluting peaks also start to show blood. And this is probably because um, the compounds already start eluting because the dilution time is uh, so long for these. 
So we decided for our conditions that a dilution factor of 10 was optimal, and this is just slightly higher than the current available ones. And then the second parameter we investigated was the duration of the ASM phase. Uh, this ASM phase is, as I mentioned before, this uh, isocratic hold that is programmed before the start of the gradient translated dimension, during which the dilution actually takes place. And this ASM phase duration is actually expressed as the number of times that your sample loop is flushed. And so it depends on the volume of the sample loop, the dilution factor, and the flow rate in the second dimension. And so, for example, if you have a higher dilution factor, you will also have a longer ASM phase duration and therefore also a longer analysis time. And so here you see the results of all these different ASM phase durations. Uh, what we saw is that when uh, ASM phase duration is too low, you also have this insufficient dilution and therefore problems with very little compounds. And if you increase it too much, you have the same issue as um, with the higher dilution factors, is that your compounds already start eluting, and then you have this uh, broadening of the eluting compounds. So what we saw is that actually uh, a sample loop flushing of 0.5 was optimal. And then for the next parameter, which is the filling percentage of the sample loops, uh, this we investigated by changing the way that we cut our first dimension chromatogram. Um, for example, uh, if you take just one large cut across your first dimension, you can fill your uh, 40 microliter sample loop at 100%. And if you take, for example, eight smaller cuts across this peak, then you can fill uh, your sample loops only 12.5%, but you fill eight different sample loops. Um, so your analysis time will also increase, increase eight times because each of these fractions is analyzed separately in the second dimension. And so what we saw is that um, when you decrease the sample loop filling, um, you actually get a uh, good improvement in peak shapes. And this is either because you inject a lower volume in the second dimension, and also because you have some additional in-loop dilution with your second dimension mobile phase. Um, but we decided because the analysis time increased so much for this one, that a sample loop filling of 25% was a good trade-off between total analysis time and uh, peak shapes. And then the final parameter we investigated was the unloading configuration of the sample loop. Uh, you can do this in two ways, either back flush or forward flush. In the back flush mode, um, your sample loops unload in the opposite direction. They unload in the opposite direction as in which they load. And in the forward flush, this happens in the same direction. And so what we saw in our study is that for the back flush mode, as you saw before, that a uh, sample loop flushing of 0.5 was optimal. And in the forward flush, we saw that you get better results when you increase the amount, you flush your sample loops in two times, then you get better results. And this is probably because the sample now has to travel through the entire sample loop before it can reach the column. And so you need more time and more volume to do the dilution. And so because back flush takes a shorter time to complete and also gives slightly better peak shapes, we decided that uh, back flush mode was optimal. Okay, and so after we optimize all these parameters, uh, we can see that there's already an improvement in peak shapes. However, especially the first ones, they were still not optimal. So we investigated a few other options. So the first option we tried is to change to a different column to a bonus argon column which can be operated at 100% water. And so this allows both to dilute with a higher percentage of water and also to retain the compounds a bit more to improve the peak shapes. And the other option was to use a column with a larger internal diameter. And as you can see, both these options uh, improved the peak shapes of the early eluting peaks, um, but yeah, they were associated with some changes in selectivity and especially when you increase the column ID, you will also lose a lot of the sensitivity. So this could be an issue when you analyze, for example, uh, samples with low concentration compounds. 
So now a short conclusion. So we have this form of phase incompatibility problem where you have hydrophilic interaction liquid chromatography combined with uh, reverse phase liquid chromatography. And then you can use this active solvent modulation to overcome these problems. And then you have all these kinds of parameters you can optimize to end up with uh, chromatograph in second dimension, which is much better big shapes. Okay, thank you for your attention. And if you're interested, we're also uh, working on a publication which is under review uh, where you can find some more information about this topic.